Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Smitty's Gunsmithing. Today I have a Rossi Gallery 22 long rifle. It's a pump made by Brass Tech International down in Bainsbridge, Georgia. Um, this rifle has got some feeding issues and it's been described as to where when the pump it's cycled around it's getting caught up in here but it's coming up kind of upside down at the angle and isn't able to feed properly so we're gonna take it apart check it out and see what's going on uh, the um, gun was is dripping wet with oil and I was told that uh, it was well oiled after it was having issues to see if that would help correct it and it did not So we're going to look in here and see what we have going on. Let's find a good bit that will fit. And I'm going to turn on some more lighting. Just for my benefit. Yeah, I think I'm good enough. First one we had there. Now, interestingly enough, I have never even held one of these guns before. Much less they were taking one apart, so. Interesting to see how this comes apart. It's also not often you see Phillips head screws on the receiver and or action of a gun. It's not starting to come apart yet. Looks like this all should slide. There we go. So it should just slide right out. See the feeding area. Definitely some very rough machining, which these guns are known for. I 
almost looks like I see some rust. Down in there, it's hard to see there. That would be the... The ejector. Looks like some kind of way that's the ejector. Let's see. No, there's the ejector. There's the extractor. There's the firing pin. So I had some, well, there's some metal shavings in it, which wouldn't surprise me. A lot of metal shavings down in there. Never seen so many Phillips head screws in a gun. If you guys can see that or not, but there's more Phillips head screws right there in the internal part of the receiver. It's just kind of unusual. Trying to see what actually feeds those rounds. That's the lifter. So this somehow feeds them back. Let's put a bow up here. So that. Supposed to be what it's like that's supposed to be behind. for the Ford because of that pin so I'm pretty sure that is supposed to be over that and in that slot let's see let's take this screwdriver right here and lift on that just like that so now that goes forward and that can't press the release right here For sure. Well, yep, it's supposed to work backwards or forward. So now our bolt should right in there. Yep. So now. Oh, the boat's still not going. There we go. Now it's going all the way forward. Okay. So as you cycle, pop, this comes back. That lifter lifts the cartridge to feed it. However, the cartridge is getting bound up in there. coming up and down okay so what I'm about to do is usually not recommended 
really should use dummy rounds when you're testing a rifle. However, I do not have any 22 dummy rounds. So I'm gonna have to roll with what I got. I ain't got my three rounds in here with me at the time. So I'm gonna see if I can replicate the issue with those. Just so everybody knows, this rifle is pointing in a safe direction. If it was to happen to go off, it's not going to hurt anyone. The only thing that's going to hit is my um, chest over here and stop. Okay, so that fed up. Right, so I'm going to manually push this up into the chamber. The feed crimp feeds nice and smooth. Okay. Everything's forward and the firing pin and the bolt is not even in here at this point in time right now. So if the, there's nothing can actually sit around off All right, so now I want to cycle it is going down past this point where the cartridge need to feed and it's lifting up but the cartridge is not coming back all the way to the lifter uh, it's supposed to be under spring tension And herein is probably our problem. I can't see down in there, but the follower in the mag tube is not down here. Like I see it down in there. It's hard to say. I need a good flashlight. Okay. Oh yeah. So there's a spring inside this um, tube right here and a follower. And it is supposed to be pushing out the end right here, sticking out. You see there is no follower sticking out. So that is the issue with this gun right here is this um, mag spring is and follower is stuck up inside this tube. And I'm gonna have to try to find why. I'm just feeling it. This is a brand new gun. And it's not dented. Typically on these 20, old 20, or these 22s with the tube fed action, these tubes here will get um, slapped, hit up against something, and they'll get a dent in them. That dent will push it inwards enough that it'll catch the follower up inside there, and the follower won't come out. Um, that's not the case with this one. This one does not have a dent in it at all. So what I'm probably going to have to do is drive this pin out right here, Take this cap off the end, take this o-ring off, and I'm going to have to get that spring out from this end. And I might have to run a cleaning rod or something through to push the follower. And my guess is going to be, and I'll let you guys know in the update, but my guess is going to be that the follower has actually got some burrs on it, where it was roughly machined. And those burrs have caught on the inside of this tube right here and not allowing it to slide back and forth like it should. If that's the case, I take it out and I hit it with some sandpaper, um, polish it up, smooth it up, and then it should function um, fine. So I'm going to end the video here, and I'm going to do some more work on this, and then I'll update you guys and um, pick up a clip when I figure out exactly what it is. And uh, if that doesn't fix it, which I think it will, but if that doesn't fix it, then I'll um, update you guys and show you what else as we explore some more. Thank you for watching. 
Okay guys, so I got this uh, magazine tube disassembled. Better just overing in the cap and the pin out of the way. So you got your spring right here. It's just a long, very thin spring. It compresses all up inside there. And uh, it's not a really strong spring, but it works for its intended purpose. It's very long, as you can see. It's when it's stretched out like this. It's actually about a good six inches longer than your tube right here. Okay. Now here's your follower. This is what should be sticking out the end right here. Okay. Now you notice this, there's a dimple all the way around, like a dimpled ring around here. And you got this flat um, surface right here. All right. That's made to keep the follower from coming all the way out the end of your tube right here. But if you notice, when I put the follower in, it falls very, very slowly to the end, sometimes. Uh, right now, I'm not getting it to go back. It's stuck about halfway up in there. And I take my rod and I can push it. And it's sticking like right here in the middle. Now, that could be two things. That could be that this tube just wasn't dimensioned properly and it's slightly smaller or got a burr right there on the inside of it around middle ways or it could be just a burr right here and feeling this this the surface right here okay it's rough I can feel some burrs on it just with my fingers just just very lightly touching it um that could be the issue personally I think it's probably a good bit of both. Um, now holding this up to a light, looking down the tube, it looks like there's a ring on the inside about halfway where it's not completely smooth. But this does fall in. Let's push this past there. It drops enough right there to tell me that I don't think the problem is the inside of this and it's not sticking every single time. See it pop right back that time. That time it did. All right, it fell right out the other end. But every now and again, it's catching right up in here. And I think the only problem is going to be these burrs right here on this. So what I'm going to do is take some 600 grit sandpaper right here. And I'm going to cup it on that flat ring. I'm just going to turn it and smooth that out. You don't want to move, remove a lot of material because you remember this this is also is what keeps this inside the tube because it's small enough or large enough that it don't come past that dimple and into the tube right there. So you don't want to remove too much material but what you do want to do is keep it even around and you want to remove any of those burrs that's left over from the manufacturing. Okay. That's all I'm doing. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. It's lightly sanding there. Okay. And that should be pretty good right there. And my finger across it, it definitely feels better. There's one spot right there. And it's like a little ridge, but I've smoothed it out. You can feel it, but it's smooth now. It's not sharp. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to run it across the head, the side of the head, not the front. Make sure that's good and smooth. Okay. Alright, I don't feel any burrs that's going to catch. Not, nothing that I feel. This assembly. And I'll show you how to clean it out as we do it. So I'm put this on my bench block here. Now I'm going to take a punch. 
just start knocking this pin out. Okay. Pour a plug out, our ring and spring comes out. And there comes the follower. Now what I'm about to do and what I'm about to show you, I'm going to do because this rifle was very heavily oiled. And I want to make sure we don't have any oil up inside this um, magazine tube right here. So what I'm going to do is take a brush or a rod. And this is a one-piece stainless 22 caliber cleaning rod. It's my favorite rod to use. It's all one piece. You don't have to worry about sections that get bent and, and messed up. And so it's all nice and slick. So if you, you got those rods that screw together. You got little sections. The sections can get rough at times. And they can bend outwards a little bit, and they can wind up scarring up your bore and mess up your rifle. I like to use a nice smooth one-piece stainless, stainless cleaning rod. Works great. So now I'm gonna take a bore mop and I'm gonna run it up through here really good. Okay. All right, and that's just to remove anything in the oil or anything inside of this tube. I don't want anything up in there that can impede the function of your follower and oil will attract dust, dirt, powder residue, lint, and those things can wind up causing this to wind up binding up inside there. Okay, so you want, you want to keep these clean. It's brass. It doesn't rust like the barrels and the other parts do so it don't need to be kept oiled. What I am going to put on there is a very light coating of only one shot. Now, mainly I'm doing this for the follower. Okay, so I'm just going to coat the follower. Be good. Set it aside and let it dry. And then our spring. This appears to be a stainless steel spring. But it's not going to hurt just to spray it very lightly okay set it aside let it dry now it's hornady one shot gun cleaner and lube again i'm not sponsored by hornady or anyone but um this has very high lubricity very high and it dries so once it dries it does not leave an oily mess and it doesn't attract dust dirt powder residue lint and everything else that can wind up slicking things up or gumming things up. So it allows everything to remain nice and slick. It has good lub uh, lubricating properties, very high lubricity, and uh, it won't attract stuff that will dirty up um, your guns or your mag tubes. So now that's dried, I'm going to drop a follower back in there. Notice how quickly that fell. in the end just like that much faster than before that's the lubricity of one of the one shot okay stuff's awesome and that's what you want that's the way you want your follower to move back and forth in that tube and that's how what keeps it from getting caught up so now we're going to assemble this back together i've got the rifle clean and put back together everything's functioning properly You just have to be patient with these springs. Take your time getting them back in there. All right. Put a piece back in. And then look. Let's see. Little chin's knurled. That's the knurled in. So this pin with this knurled in on it right here, if you can see that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's narrowed on one end, so you want to make sure that goes back in the same way it came out. So I'm going to start that there. I'm going to do this on my block. It's hard to hold this together. 
I want to get that pin just started in there. Okay, that's this. I rotated this cap slightly as I was pushing that on that, and it allowed it to get right in place. Okay, right, so now tap our pin in. And you don't want to go all the way with it, but you do want to have it far enough. There's the mirror will start catching in that plastic. I said it holds it in and don't fall out. When you see it touching the back side on the bottom, that's where you want it. And that'll give you just enough room. So that when you put this back in the rifle. That surface catches right there on your notch. Okay, so it locks that in place, and that's all you. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Um, starting back up where we left off last night, where I thought I had found a fix for this rifle. This is the Rossi Gallery 22 long rifle. It's a pump action design, and uh, figured out last night when I took it apart, examined everything that the follower here inside the magazine tube. You see how it's sticking out when I push it in, it pops right back out from spring pressure. That's the way it's supposed to operate. However, it was getting stuck. I'll try to push this in here. It was getting stuck up in the magazine tube about right in here and wasn't extending all the way. So therefore, it wasn't feeding the rounds in properly on top of the lifter. And it's causing the rounds to lift up with... The bottom of the round, the primary end of the round, sitting up kind of like that down in the feed throat assembly and was a feeding. So I thought I had figured out what was the cause, and uh, that was. As you can recall, last night we were deburred the uh, um, round portion of this magazine tube follower here and um, put it back in. I tested it out and it worked fine. I'll demonstrate that to you guys. I'll throw some rounds in here again. I recommend using dummy rounds if you had them available. Um, I don't have any dummy rounds for a 22, but I am working alone. This rifle is going to be pointed in a safe direction. And if it would happen to go off, I'm not going to be working to trigger any, but if for some reason it would happen to go off, the only thing that's going to damage over here is my dresser. So. not going to hurt anyone and I have never I'm not saying things can't happen they can but I've never had a firearm go off while working on it and I've had quite a few that I've had to remove live rounds from that were stuck in the chamber so, so, so far I'm on a pretty good track record okay so we got the magazine tube fully loaded I got a little pan here to hopefully catch most of the rounds as I eject them. Now this particular model, if you pull the trigger and fire it, fire the first round, you can just work the um, pump and cycle your next action in. But if you're not actually pulling the trigger and firing the hammer, you have to press this little button right here on the front of your trigger guard. Okay. So I'm going to hold that button, my hands off the trigger, and I'm just going to work the action. Okay. As you can see, it fed flawlessly. All the rounds got hung up. And only threw one off the desk, or two off the desk rather. So I'll find those later. Alright, so we got the rifle functioning just like it needs to be. I'm happy with that. Happy results. I believe the owner of this rifle will be happy as well. So now what I'm gonna do. Let's go back over. And we're going to take this rifle back apart. All I'm going to take off is actually going to be the receiver plate 
and take the bolt out. I may take a few more internal components out. What I want to do is now that I've got the rifle working properly, and uh, I never like to return a gun back to someone when it's still dirty. I know you want to cock. I pull this release for the pump, and you want that pump to be about halfway back, roughly. And it'll, you see it'll push your bolt out the rear, and then your cover plate. We'll lift off, okay. All right, so now we got that apart. I'm going to demonstrate to you what you need to look for if you have an issue with one of these rifles. I'm not going to go into the entire disassembly and cleaning of it on this video, I want to try to keep this video from being too long, but I'm going to show you what you're looking for, okay. And this isn't as easy to replicate without the rifle assembled, but do what we can do here. So I'm going to load up one, two, three, four, five, six rounds. Okay. Now you see one of the rounds already fed right there. Okay. However, that's not what I'm going to show you. So again, as in earlier in the video, I'm just going to push this round up right here and pull it out the way. Now you see how that round fed into your feed through. This area, this smaller, lighter silver block, this is your feed through. Your lifter sits down right at the bottom of it underneath this round. Your spring pressure from your magazine tube or your rod in your magazine tube is what pushes that round all the way to the back of this feed throat just like it is right now you can see how it's sitting right there okay it's crucial for that round to be pushed all the way back in that feed throat because then your carrier will allow or your lifter rather when you sack or your pump your lifter will push that round up and enable it to ride across the front of your feed throat right here and chamber into your chamber okay so if your rounds aren't being pushed all the way back by your spring and your magazine tube and your follower, then you're going to run into the issue where it's not going to cycle right, it's not going to feed right, okay? So if you might, if you start having an issue with these rifles not feeding right, especially if you notice that the rear of the um, bullet starts sticking up, that's a good indication there's something wrong with your follower in your mag tube and or you've got a weak spring um, in your mag tube or it could also be that the follower has gotten caught up somewhere in the tube The tube maybe have gotten dented and the follower can't come all the way out and protrude out the end like it's supposed to So to demonstrate I'm gonna fold this down pull my release back so I can pump my slide. All right, see how that lifted up Okay, and as I run, run the slide back that lifter is gonna drop and if your bolt was on here, your bolt will be pushing your round forward and up and into your chamber. All right, and you see how we don't have a round ready to go just yet. Okay, so I got one chamber. All right, you can see right here, a little bit better now, you can see your lifter right here. It's going to be that black, long bar looking piece right here. And what happens is, as you work this pump, that lifter drops. Your magazine tube and your spring and follower pushes the next round back as that lifter drops and pushes it all the way back up to here where you've seen it sitting before. Okay, so then when the lifter lifts up, you see how much distance you've got from here to here on the front of your lifter. And that sits up under your cartridge enough that it lifts the cartridge up with the front pointing up. Okay. If that round isn't able to be pushed all the way to the back of your feed throat here, either because your feed throat's dirty, your mag spring's weak, your follower's gotten stuck up inside your tube, whatever the case may be, there's a bunch of things that can cause it. But if that round is able to feed and push back all the way to here, the lifter will not be able to lift it up properly, and your rifle's going to jam. Okay? 
So now I'm going to pull this round back out of the chamber right here. All right. So now as I bring this pump all the way forward, now you see that round fed back. All the way back in your um, feed throat assembly. All right, and it's sitting on top of the lifter. So as I cycle this back, you see how the round the lifter pumps up. Okay. And as I cycle the pump further to the back, that round lifts up. Okay, and it's right ready and angled for the bolt to strip it and feed it straight into the chamber. Okay, so if your rifle isn't feeding, and most 22s operate pretty similarly, whether it's a semi-automatic, a pump, whatever. I mean, you just have different mechanisms that causes it to do this. But you need a lifter in there to lift the round up. And that lifter is under spring pressure. And if the round can't go all the way back in your feed throat, the lifter can't lift it up properly from the front end. It's going to just catch the back and lift the back up and your rifle is going to jam. All right. I hope that helps you understand a little bit about how these 22, op uh, 22 rifles operate and what to look out for um, when you have a problem.